It's been quite the day for woke video games as the Dragon Age The Veil Guard creators are lashing out at the fans left and right. Uh, this is pretty crazy after uh, the revelation of the character <laughs> creator last week where we saw it and you could put top surgery scars into it. You could put cellulite into it. Uh, it was something absolutely crazy that no gamers were asking for, that no gamers wanted. And it's clear that Dragon Age The Veil Guard, uh, with that and with uh, the trailer that's been shown so far, is going to just be another woke nightmare that takes over a series that was once wonderful and once popular among gamers, a lot of fun back in the day, uh, takes those fantasy elements and just destroys it uh, because they wanted to uh, <laughs> put their political agenda ahead of everything else. And now, of course, they're attacking the fans in multiple regards. Uh, this one comes from their game director and is actually... Uh, posted up as an interview, and, and this is hailed as PC gamers a good thing that you wouldn't want your fans to actually like a game. Very crazy, and that's a good thing. They love to put that in their headlines. Uh, we'll get into this, and we'll get into the attacks on gamers uh, made by the, the writer uh, who worked on the project as well. Uh, crazy, crazy times at Dragon Age, the Veil Guard. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe button, everybody. My name is John Delarose, and I appreciate you guys being here as we cover everything in pop culture. I am a comic creator, and uh, unlike these guys, I listen to my people. When my people say they wanted more sci-fi action adventure, I gave it to them, and uh, and I was rewarded for it. Uh, $51,000 on this campaign. Thank you so much. And it's still available for pre-order as I'm getting things ready. Uh, this is a Star Wars universe. Uh, I am building a full universe out of this uh, alternative. And this is a spy thriller in space. If you enjoy that and enjoy comic books, you're going to love this. Check it out. Uh, it's in the description below. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and supporting our artistic efforts uh, as we you know, listen to our fans. It, it's, it should be a simple thing, but uh, this is what they say. Too many fan service cameos can ultimately cheapen arcs and the authenticity of these characters, says Dragon Age the Veil Guard's game director, and it's directed at Zevran fans, I guess. Um, but you get into the Q&A here, and this is what... This is what you know, PC Gamer actually distilled down. They said it comes down to, uh, do they have more of a story to tell? We don't want to just bring back characters so you can be like, hey, I recognize that person, but certain characters have more to their story. Uh, do we have something interesting to say with them? Do they have an interesting role? Does their story progress as a result of what they do or what they don't do in the storytelling right now? Game director agreed, and this is the Connie Bush Always a, always a woman in these positions at this point. It's great to see cameos, but fan service can sometimes be exciting in the moment, but ultimately can cheapen arcs and authenticity of these characters. So it sounds reasonable, the setup here, uh, as, as uh, the creative director is talking about this. But once the game director talks about it, you can see how angry she is. She doesn't want the gamers who actually loved the original Dragon Age to get any fan service, to get any love for their games from before or actually extrapolated into this game. Um, and this is comes down to uh, kind of the way the SJWs always operate when they take over a property. They know that they're a bunch of talentless hacks. I'm just going to call it like it is. And because of that, they want to put their stamp on a property. That's why you always see them talk about subverting expectations or uh, making it their own. And they really want to make something their own. You, you, you see, you know, in, in the fantasy realm, nothing is more uh, apparent in this than Rings of Power. They took Tolkien's basic world and they just absolutely ignored everything and just made their own weird fantasy thing that's really boring uh, as, as, a, as a result uh, and it's not Tolkien and Tolkien fans don't get anything out of it uh, they just go gosh these are not the characters that J.R.R. Tolkien wrote this is somebody else's characters uh, just happens to have the skin suit of it and that's exactly what they've done to Dragon Age Dragon Age had a beautiful uh, first couple of games and uh, it's 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 waned already uh, but the Veil Guard mean, uh, looks like it's going to make it a lot worse. And it looks like they're going to change things completely and not actually extrapolate upon characters that you love at this point. Like, why would you do that? If you had a video game franchise where people had characters they love, it's not that hard to tell a story <laughs> with them and add it on. We're, we're only on, like, game four, right? Um, we're not, it's not, I mean, how many are there at this point? Um, and so... Uh, it's not like they're out of stories. I mean, gosh, uh, the Marvel and DC Comics have been making Spider-Man and Batman stories, thousands of them, right? Um, and uh, so you can do that. But these people just don't want to. And it's because they, they think that actually doing what the fans want cheapens their artistry, right? 
They want to be important. They want to make their own characters. They want to make Dragon Age their own. They want to subvert expectations. They want them to be remembered as the ones who created this and their characters to be the ones that are the, that are the ones who are remembered. And so because of that hubris, because it's narcissism really, uh, because of that, they don't want to actually give the fans what they want. And that's what leads to this direction uh, when you get this. And when you then insert that kind of thing, you, you bring in these political activists on top of that, shake things up, uh, add all the ingredients together, and you get the woke nonsense that we've seen so far out of Dragon Age the Veilguard. But it gets worse from there. Uh, the former Dragon Age lead writer, David Gator, bashes critics accusing Dragon Age the Veilguard of being woke as effing tourists. This is the, this is the one thing they love to, to, to call everybody. Tourist, you're just a tourist. You're not a real gamer. You, you don't even... Get... And the thing is, they're always directing it at real gamers who have been playing these games for a long, long time, who are just like, okay... This is your new your new catchphrase. Uh, they say it all the time. I remember with, with with Warhammer 40K when it was going all woke earlier this year. They were calling everybody tourists, uh, you know, uh, from the left uh, at the same thing. Um, so they they know that racist didn't work. They know that sexist and homophobe didn't work, and Nazi is 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 is, a, is kind of a dead word at this point. So they needed something new, and uh, and so in gaming, you know, it seems like effective rhetoric. To call somebody a noob that they don't know what they're talking about, they can't use the term noob because that was, uh, you know, a gamer word again. And uh, so, tourist uh, ends up the replacement for that, and so that's what they do these days. And so, it's an insult to gamers just because they don't like what's going on here. So, in a post to Blue Sky, of course, this is what they, <laughs> that's where they're at these days. They hide from Twitter because they don't want to get any pushback for their insane rants that they throw at people. Uh, they say apparently the usual suspects are upset about how woke the new Dragon Age and apparent sudden unexpected development in the series. He added, effing tourists, the usual suspects. And this is gamers. This is this is what's happening at this point. And these people are scared. Uh, for him to post this on Blue Sky and to, to uh, get this frustrated uh, in his little echo chamber right there, this is a mark of fear. And they should be afraid. Because what's happened with all of these AAA games that have come out this year that have tried to push this agenda on everybody, it's failed. Disaster. Hundreds of millions of dollars down the drain. It's sinking companies. Ubisoft is like in huge trouble, guys. You, I don't even think you realize how bad it is. I, I made a video and one of my Ubisoft insiders actually gave me some information inside. Go watch that if you haven't already. I, it was from this morning. But they're not the only ones. Rocksteady. Of course, we had Square Enix layoffs, and now they've ra they've rapidly shifted directions. They've gotten rid of Sweet Baby Inc. Um, these people know that their time is numbered in the industry. They know that they've created bad games that aren't fun. They've taken properties, and they, they've just butchered them all the way around. They've ruined the Batman Arkham Asylum uh, thing. For I mean, I mean how, can you, how can you mess that up and do this crap with Suicide Squad? I just saw that Season 3 unveiled another uh, strong black female lead. <laughs> to go at things again. Yay. That's going to fix things. Uh, but Concord's dead, right? Um, everything is failing on these guys' levels, and they're they're fearing for their jobs at this point. And so the only thing they can do, because they can't blame themselves, they can't self-reflect. Like I said, they're all narcissists. It's all about their own uh, wanting to put their own agenda into things. And they blame gamers as a result, and preemptively, because Dragon Age the Veilguard isn't even out yet. But the gamers are not buying it, and uh, and it's already showing that pre-orders are low, just like we saw with uh, with uh, with um, Assassin's Creed Shadows, just like we saw with Star Wars Outlaws, just like we saw with Conquered, and they're shaken because gamers are moving as a pretty good unit at this point, and we're making waves. And when we actually get together and vote with our wallets, it's working. I mean, if we can literally sink a company like Ubisoft just by not buying a couple of games and doing it together. They know that the power's with the people, the power's with the wallets, the power's with the consumers, and they can't just force their agendas on us anymore. And that's why they're so mad. That's why they're calling us every name in the book to try to lash out, to try to get their media buddies to rally around them. Uh, we saw how IGN and PC Gamer last week uh, just uh, tried to stand for the Veilguard character creator. It was, it was just weird how fast the media coordinated their attacks on gamers. And uh, the lash outs are going to get worse, guys, because these guys are going to be all losing jobs very, very soon. And, uh, you know, we'll have a nicer, more pleasant video game industry as a result. So that's what's happening now. They don't want to service the, the Dragon Age fans. They don't want to have gamers around. They want to call you names. They disrespect you. 
And all we got to do is just not buy the game. Leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for being there. And please do check out my Hidden Emperor graphic novel that I mentioned at the top of the video. Uh, this is wonderful. If you enjoy like what Star Wars used to be, you'll love this. It's a good comic. It's in the description below. Thank you guys for supporting the channel.